and both bury their heads in the sand. That is not the answer to this problem. Partly because science has been right in so much. We owe these video cameras to science and these spotlights. Came in a car here. We've been on a red hot telephone line, Jim and I, all this week. All these things came from science. So just to say science is wrong is probably the most foolish line to take in our modern world. But it's equally silly to say they're always right. But this way of repudiation is not the answer to say one is right and the other is wrong and face people with a choice. It leads to dishonesty. It leads people to feel that they must commit intellectual suicide in order to believe the Bible. And that is a mistake. The second way is to keep science and scripture as far apart as possible. And to say that science is concerned with one kind of truth and scripture with another. That science is regarded as scientific fact years ago are now no longer regarded as scientific fact. Science changes its views. For example, it used to believe that the atom was the smallest thing in the universe. Now we know that each atom is a whole universe in itself. It was said until very recently that the X and Y chromosomes decided whether a fetus became a male or a female human being. I gather now that's been thrown out of the window and it's something else entirely different. You really have to keep changing your mind to catch up. The whole discovery of DNA has revolutionized our thinking about life because we now know that the earliest form of life had the most complicated DNA in it and that mathematically DNA is a language. It is not a chance combination. It is a language passing on a message from one generation to another. Therefore, DNA must have a person behind it. That's changing a lot of people's thinking. So science changes. It is in a state of transition. Geology is changing. I read an article by the science correspondent of the Times. He said there are now seven different ways of finding out the age of the earth. Carbon-14, radiogenic helium, magnetic field decay, and oceanic nickel, etc., etc. And he gave a list of the dates that these new methods have revealed. And interestingly enough, the shortest is 9,000 years and the longest is 175,000 years not four and a quarter billion. Well, who's right? I don't know. I think we wait until the scientists make up their mind on many real issues. Anthropology is now in a state of disorder. What we thought were prehistoric men, our ancestors, are no longer regarded as our ancestors, but creatures that came and went and disappeared. Biology, again, has changed. Very few believe in Darwinian evolution today. So that's the first point I want to make, that science does change its opinion. And to tie the Bible to any particular age of science would mean that in the next generation the Bible would be thrown away as well. The second thing I want to say is equally important. Traditional interpretations of Scripture can also change. The Bible is inspired, but our interpretation of it may not be. I think we need to draw a very clear distinction between the Bible text and how we interpret it. For example, when the Bible talks about the four corners of the earth, who interprets that to mean that the earth is a cube or a square? See, The Bible uses what we call uh, the language of appearance, it talks about the sun rising in the east and setting in the west and running around the sky. Who takes that to mean that the sun is moving around the earth? Well, they used to, but it was a wrong interpretation. It's using, using simply the language of appearance. So that we need to think again about our interpretation of the Bible so that we become a little more flexible. I believe in this way, when science is realized to be transitional, and our interpretation of scriptures seem to be traditional, then we'll begin to be willing to rethink. I thought I'd illustrate this by looking at the days in Genesis 1. And I found that there are at least 
five different ways of interpreting the word day in Scripture. And I'm going to go through all five and leave you to take your pick. How about that? There is, as I've said, a slight discrepancy between six days and four and a quarter billion years. And we need to close the gap in some way. So how are we going to take the word day in Genesis 1? It's a Hebrew word yom, which sometimes means a day of 24 hours. It can also mean an era, as in the day of the horse and cart is over. I don't mean a 24-hour day. I mean the day of the horse and cart is over. But there are five different ways of interpretation. The first is to take the word day literally as an earth day of 24 hours. Your problem then is to find more time somewhere. And you'll find various commentaries find more time in one of three ways. The first is by finding a gap between verse 1 and verse 2, or rather verse 2 and verse 3. In other words, the earth, it said, became without form and void over a very long period, and the six days are God putting it right again. That's a very common theory. You'll find it in the Schofield Bible. You'll find it in a number of Bible notes. That, in fact, the six days were the reconstruction of a world that had gone into chaos over a long period. Very common theory. A second way of finding more time is to find it all in the flood. There have been various books, notably connected with the names Whitcomb and Morris, that have said that the geological data that we have all come out of the flood. Not very easy to maintain that. Most intriguing way of finding time is this, that God created genuine antiques. Begins with the theory, how old was God when he was made? Was Adam when he was made by God? Wasn't a baby. So was he 30 years old when he was made by God? In which case, anybody meeting him would have said, you're 30 years old. They'd have been wrong. He would have been only half an hour old. Do you follow the theory? That God can create genuine antiques and that he can make a tree that looks like 200 years old and has all the rings in it. It's a possible theory. God could do that. But all these are ways of trying to take the day literally and find more time somewhere. Follow me? And you're welcome to take any of those interpretations. Then there are those who take a day as meaning a geological era. That it's a long time. It's an age day. Well, that's quite a common theory. Therefore, we're talking not about six days, but about six geological ages. The third is the mythological, which I've already mentioned, that treats the six days as pure myth. It's only the poetic framework of the story, and the main thing is to get the moral out of the story and forget the framework. That's part of the myth. That means it's a fabled day. One of the most intriguing was by Professor Wiseman of London University. He believed the days were educational meaning that God revealed his creation in stages to Moses. And on the first day of a week in Moses' life, God said, this is what I did. And then the next day, he told him a bit more, and the next day a bit more, and a bit more. So these were school days of Moses. Hope you're still with me. And there are two forms of that theory. One is that God revealed creation verbally in words, but another intriguing is that he revealed it visually as he did the book of Revelation to John by giving Moses a kind of picture show and Moses saw uh, the light separate from the darkness then the screen went black and then Moses saw another picture of the moisture being separated from the seas and next picture he saw plants and then animals and birds and so on that it was a kind of picture show which he wrote down but both of those theories whether in word or picture assume that the days belong to Moses' school timetable, as it were. And the final interpretation is that these were God days. Time is relative to God as well as to us, that a thousand days are like a day to God and a day like a thousand years. Therefore, God was saying to me, the whole of creation was all in a week's work. That's what it was to me. 
And the point of saying that would be that if you take geological time, human life loses all significance. For example, go back to Cleopatra's needle. If you let Cleopatra's needle represent the age of our planet and put a 10p piece flat on top of the needle, that's the age of the human race. And if you put a postage stamp on top of that, its thickness represents civilized men. Do you realize we lose all significance in that? Who are we? And God, I believe, wanted us to think of creation as a week's work because he wanted to get down to the important bit. That's us on planet Earth. Well, that's the theory. The seventh day, note the length of the seventh day because that has lasted centuries. It lasted all the way through the Old Testament. God's seventh day rest lasted until Easter Sunday when he raised his son from the dead. All through the Old Testament, there is nothing new created. 